Initially, what attracted me to the project was Steve, Steve McQueen. Um, I'm such a huge fan of all of the work that he's done before. Um, he made an incredibly important film years ago about um, a, a very sort of pivotal moment in Irish history. So he's always been someone who's sort of um, been on my radar. Uh, I loved that he came from the art world and then moved over into filmmaking and you know I think you can see because of that he has a very unique eye and um, kind of plays with time and visuals and pacing in a way that maybe other directors wouldn't so um, he's always been someone that I've wanted to work with and actually right before this movie started I had been working non-stop for about two years and I said to my agent I was like only only get me a job if it's Steve McQueen and if it's Steve McQueen then I'll do it but if not I'm taking some time off and then with that it it sort of popped up so um yeah so I knew it was something that I wanted to do anyway. Rita is George's mother um George is the main character in this piece and he's who we follow from beginning to end um she's a single mother she's in her late 20s so she had George when she was pretty young um, and the father of George um, was most definitely deported um, because of his race after a, a fight that started in the street one day that he didn't start himself but <clears throat> found himself in the middle of and she never saw him again. Her and George have a very special relationship and very sort of intimate in the way that I think a lot of single parents have with an only child in particular. It's always been the two of them. Um, and yeah, they're kind of thick as thieves. So she, I mean, he is her everything. When he gets on that train and she suddenly realizes that she's made a mistake or she regrets letting him go, um, the rest of her arc is very much about her regretting that decision, feeling an incredible amount of guilt, but then also trying to find some sort of way of continuing with her day to day. Well, I have the great Naomi Dawn to thank for my transformation every single morning. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, I've never really um, played a character like this that is um, put together so well as so many women were around that time. I mean, R Rita reminds me so much of stories that I'd hear my own grandmother tell me who would have been slightly older than, um, than well, younger, I guess, than Rita, but she, she came along a little bit later and she would tell me how, you know, they'd get ready for the dance hall on a Friday and Friday morning they'd go into town and they'd get their fabrics for their dresses and then they'd sew themselves into it at night so that they could go to a dance. So they were like incredibly self-sufficient and I think it was important for Naomi that any of the makeup and hair that she did on me it's also something that I could potentially do myself and we have scenes where we actually watch Rita um, putting her armour on as it were um, and it really does sort of feel like that there's like a face that she needs to present to the world like all of these women do and even when they work in the munitions factory when they're kind of doing this very sort of intense manual labour they've still got their lipstick on and they've still got their eyes done and their hair is still curled and um, and yeah, and so it's been really, uh, I suppose it's been really helpful for me to, um, you know, start like a, a worse version of this in the morning and end up um, sort of being ready to go onto the battlefield a little bit. Adam, our production designer, is a genius and um, he's done a lot of Wes Anderson films as well. So just for context, that's how smart he is um, and yeah he's like transformed old factories that haven't been used in years and years and turned them into something really really beautiful and full of character and full of life and um, he's managed to make a sound stage feel like a home um, or a tube station um, 
and yeah it's just an absolute pleasure to get to sort of play around in in his uh creations he's he's incredible what's really special about this film is that it's highlighting the sacrifice that was made all around by everybody um and yeah that's what i found really fascinating about it and i think because of that because it's focusing on the people on the ground the people at home that are left behind um it weirdly feels more um grounded and more sort of human to me i would say love is the one and only theme ultimately of blitz um and it's something that steve will repeat to us on a daily basis that we're nothing without love and life is nothing without love and so i think that's really important for him to make that pardon the pun but that the heart of the movie um you know the story is incredibly simple a, a boy and his mother lose each other and it's all about them coming back together to tell one another that they love each other that's it and the simplicity of that is so beautiful because it's something that we can all relate to and we always will in terms of the jack as a firefighter there was a lot that um that i didn't realize you know they were they were these young guys signing up and uh, all ages signing up and then um there wasn't much time, there wasn't much uh, training involved. So really you just got thrown into this environment where you, were, you weren't really um, adept at dealing with it. And so I imagine it was really frightening for a lot of these people that, you know, hadn't ever been in this scenario and they were, they were dealing with death and, and on, a, on a daily basis. So reading accounts of that and uh, trying to understand just, just like the human um, uh, level of it all was, was really interesting to me. It's about independence, it's about, it's about love, connection. I think, you know, the, the character of George, played by the wonderful Elliot. I've heard Steve describe it as kind of a, a, a journey into adulthood, you know, this, this journey back to, back to his mum and um, going through all of that hardship and trauma and sort of arriving at the other side is is uh is is such a massive sort of thing for a, a boy of his age to go through and i think all the people that he encounters along the way are like catalysts for his sort of growth and development and challenges you know all of these characters that sort of come into the story and 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 um and push it forward in ways i loved working with sasha um this is my second time doing something with sasha and so it was it was nice to just be comfortable with someone you're working with and, and um, be, be friends, and, you know, and, and we found that um, relationship and finding that like, nuance between them uh, very interesting. You know, you meet a lot of actors that need um, total, like, focus and um, a certain environment to, in order for them to do their job. But Saoirse can just just do it. I mean, obviously Sersha does the work and is incredible at their craft, but outside of that, that she can just turn it on and be laughing and then come into it and, and pull out the best emotion, which is, uh, which is hard to do. It's really about love and loss and redemption in different ways. I think this young man dealing with this extraordinary journey back, back home, um, and there's magic to that as well, because we, we are going through these different landscapes with this, with this young boy. So um, the worlds are vast. That goes across to, to, to set and production design as well. I mean, the production design in this film is so impressive. I mean, we, went, we filmed in King's Cross one day on the streets of, of London, and they transformed a street into, you know, the time frame and, and, and bombed buildings and market vendors and it was just like that everywhere you look is it, it, something in indicating period, something indicating the time, you know, the, 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 the blitz. So all of that is so helpful and, and, and rare that you get that really. A lot of the time you sort of end up in a studio. Yeah, Steve was really specific with everything. 
I mean, I think people should watch this film because Steve McQueen, it, you know, makes beautiful films. And I haven't seen him make a film like this. I don't think there's been many films like this from this perspective, um, from a black UK director. It's always nice to reframe history and look at it from, from a human perspective rather than a sort of sensationalist war film. You know, there's, there's, there's way more there. A lot of it was to do with going to the archives of the Imperial War Museum, a lot of it. Um, and I had I known people there before because I did a, a project f with them um, um, because I was a war artist for Iraq in 2003. Yeah, and so I was in Iraq and I knew a lot of the, of the researchers there. You know, I think we know more about the Tudors than we know about what happened during the Blitz, and it's not at all of what one would think. M much more in detail, much more. I mean, the, the diversity of London at that day, at that, that time, was pretty uh, incredible. In a way, it's it's in all of our, you know, if you're from Britain, you know, particularly London and other cities in, in the UK, I think Blitz is in our psyche from day one, even if we know it or not. I suppose how it sort of really came into focus for me as, as an idea for feature film was when I found this image of this child on, on, on a station, on a platform. It's this black child, this boy. Um, and I just looked at him and I thought, well, where did you come from? And I saw this image and I thought, who is he and what is his story? And I, I wanted to tell it. As a storyteller, as a screenwriter, as a director, what I wanted to do was tell a story. In a way, it was about a Hansel and Gretel story. It was, a, it was about a fairy tale. It was, it was George's fairy tale. But in that fairy tale, he, he on his journey, he sees things. He picks things up. And as he goes along, he becomes less of a child, less innocent, and into some, something else. You know, again, he, by the time he sort of, by, by the time we're at the end of the movie, he, he is not, he's lost his innocence in a way. Um, and I really wanted to go with him on that journey. Oh, she's one of the best actresses out there. There's no two ways about it. I mean, she's Betty Davis. I mean, she's like that. I mean, she's like amazing. I mean, even Cersei eating cornflakes is fascinating. I mean, that's how good she is. I mean, she, she's like, you know, she's extraordinary. I mean, she does, she comes into a room, she does something, and it's like, hmm, I've never seen that before. She makes the whole thing extraordinary. She just does. She just does. You know, she makes, reminds you you're human. Well, I think George is the observer, you know, I think, you know, and I think I've got to give the credit, you know, my goodness gracious, what a child, what, a, what an extraordinary actor Elliot is. I mean, he, nine years old, not, never acted before nine years old. And in some ways, I suppose what, what, what's being represented there is his own fascination with what he's being presented to in reality, you know, you know, was, you know to be told about the, the Blitz as a nine-year-old boy today and to sort of have these eyes open and to feel all these things and have the emotion and the impact. Again, you know, he's a real child. I mean, he's a, that's why he's a, he's a great actor because he's not playing a child, he is a child. You know, and these things that come to him, he's, rea he's reacting or responding to it as, as, as they come along. That's why the actors have to be that good to be next to Elliot. You have to raise your game because he's, he's there, he's, he's, he's present. I think that kind of situation, it's not a case of, you know, how a child would, would respond now as respond then, it's just about, and I say, um, trying to deal with such, so, so much pain. So, you go, and you know, there's so much pain going on, and how you deal with it is you deal with it only on, often in the inside, but what's so beautiful is how it reflects on George's face. You feel the weight. You see yourself in George. You see yourself in George. You look at George and you see yourself in him. I think that's, the, that's, the, uh, that's, that's what happens with, with, with fantastic, great actors that somehow you see your reflection in their eyes and you recognize your pain within their pain. And again, for a nine-year-old boy to carry this kind of movie, I mean, what can I tell you? It was a joy. I think, you know, Apple would have been would have been fantastic. They believed in the script. They just wanted to get, wanted to get on with it. It was a joy coming to work every day in Leesden, working with Adam Somner. Uh, you know, it was absolutely a joy. First time I worked with Adam, you know, it, 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 again, it was a, it was a really, it was a kind of a, a British effort. Uh, with, but with American support in a way which was just an, amazing. Because again, when do we ever tell a, when do we ever have a, a British epic without it being about, you know, some, some sort of costume drama from, you know, 
100 or 200 years ago or, 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 or the early 19th century in a, in a manor house. This was very much about the landscape of Britain. So therefore, we can have the epicness within the landscape. You know, not about you know how much money you have or, or, or how big your house is or battles in, in a way. It was about people trying to survive an environment. Uh, uh, just uh, People just trying to, to, to survive a hostile environment and trying to get by and, and find themselves and who they are during that time. When I heard about what kids were like going through during that time, um, I felt really bad because some kids would go and never come back and they wouldn't see their parents ever again. So, and being the parent, it'd be really heartbreaking um, knowing that you might not see your child again. Rita is obviously George's mum and she is white. She's really tried to take care of George as much as she can because she's a single mother and George has a hard time like being happy a lot because he's never had a dad and Rita tries to do as much as she can to keep him safe and make sure that he's happy. And working with Sasha Ronan, <coughs> she is very funny. She is definitely an amazing actress and like it was interesting to hear that she started her big career when she was the same age as me. Steve, um, when he wants something, he has to get it. But at the same time, he is really nice. Sometimes we just talk about random, like the most random things. And sometimes when I'm on set, he'll tell me like, what's gonna happen? Where I'm gonna go, what I should do. And my costume is actually surprisingly comfortable because I thought it would be really itchy because like your first look at it would be like that is so uncomfortable and the audience would watch the film and be like oh that's just one costume but there's actually five different costumes that are more dirtier and like worn out and stuff yeah so I thought the costume would be very uncomfortable and I wouldn't enjoy it but it's pretty good Steve has been on a, the top of my list of people to work with. Um, I think he's a wonderful director. He really is, um, and I love his work. And you know, I've followed his career from 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 the very beginning, basically. Someone like Steve, um, you have an amazing kind of sense of freedom. Uh, he creates this lovely playground, and you just get in there and just play and just find it. Do you know what I mean? And he's. He's wonderful, he's very supportive and he just makes you feel confident in what you're doing. And you f instantly you feel it because you've got a costume, you've got this amazing wig for me personally and, and you're in these fantastic sets, do you know what I mean? It's that kind of little rites of passage story that always goes down well with an audience, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? A boy on a journey and that kind of... the nostalgia of it. Um, from a different angle this time, from a different perspective, a very much kind of working class element, do you know what I mean? To really see how it hit that part of society and how they were affected, do you know what I mean? Um, and especially the, the young kids, I mean, how, imagine how traumatic that must have been to be taken away from your parents, you know what I mean? Your mum, and then sent somewhere where you didn't know anyone, do you know what I mean? And, I think I think history as well. We, we you know we love we love to we love to see stories about the past, don't we? We we really do. Do you know what I mean? And and I think in this respect, I think it's 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 a different perspective that we're getting to see from this time, which is certainly a perspective I've never seen it from the eyes of a young mixed race boy. Do you know what I mean? Back in then days, it's it's something I've never seen before. The inspiration was this photograph. He saw a photograph of a young boy and that inspired him to create this story. Because, you know, look, at, um, historically, if you look at it properly, do you know what I mean? I'm a mixed race man, do you know what I mean? My granddad was from Jamaica, but yet the presence of black people is not, is not very well known during the World War, do you know what I mean? It's not until you see and you do the research and you understand. 
how prevalent um, and how a major part of it they were. Do you know what I mean? The Second World War, especially. Um, how, 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 yeah, how, how, what, what a huge part they played in it. Um, and then I think something like this, the, this, the story of this young boy, we kind of follow and see the world through his eyes at that particular time, do you know what I mean? Which, which, which for me was wonderful. My character, Albert, was in the First World War um, and he suffered heavily from PTSD. And it was kind of, you know, historically as well, during, during the Blitz, look, we're told, and we have this perception that it was all like, you know, all sat around the piano drinking tea and, you know, we kept, keep carry on, what is it? Um, calm down and carry on and we, we, we got, and the spirit was beautiful, all of that was there, do you know what I mean? That camaraderie and was, was there and it was fantastic. And it was what got them through that unity, do you know what I mean? Um, but then there was also a dark side to that. For me as an actor, what I've found is when you turn up to a set like Café de Paris, your imagination is just infused and you're completely immersed within this world. Do you know what I mean? It's, you, you don't have to do anything. You just, you just go, okay, yeah, I, be, I believe this because it's instantly there for you. And as an actor, then what we're allowed to do is we, we get to play, do you know what I mean? And we get to, you don't have to stretch your imagination too far because you're immersed within this place. And like, you know, like you said, the attention to detail with, with the bodies and there was lots of essays. We had quite a lot of essays in there and, and they were all, you know, pretending to be dead. And there was a couple of dummies on the floor and it, you could see the way um, the, the roof had collapsed and there was wood everywhere. Like there was gravel on the floor, there was dust everywhere. It was like being in a real bomb site. Naomi as well had a wonderful idea, which I would have never thought of. And th that's why she's so fantastic and amazing as well. And she, like I said, you know, we're, we're very lucky in this, in this industry. We have amazing craftsmen and women, you know what I mean? Who are so brilliant at their jobs and allowed to create and, and, and especially with someone like Steve. Steve's a very collaborative director. Um, so it's what you bring to the table, do you know what I mean? And, and with Naomi, she, she had this great idea to, we had a wig with was kind of long hair and long gray, kind of like a little gray blonde streaks in it, but it was a long hair and it just, it just immediately transformed my, my face and, and, and with the costume on and with the wig on, this kind of wavy hair long hair and short at the back and the sides, but this long hair, I just immediately felt the characters, you know what I mean? So, like I said to you, as an actor, our job is is, is very simple then, in many ways, you know what I mean? We play and we find it and there's depths to the character, but you've got this world that's already been created for you, and these costumes and this makeup and this hair in particular. Steve McQueen, honestly, he, if it weren't for him, I don't think I would have thought I would be an actor. Because he asked me, Benjamin, can, 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 um, can you act? <laughs> you know, and, and I, <laughs> do you know, I, I was like, what? Uh, acting, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, and that, and that, was, that, was, that was what provoked my interest. Uh, walking onto the set was, in, into the air raid shelter was, was Amazing, it was incredible. I felt that it was so authentic. I felt that I was back in 1940, 1940s. I was back. I felt, I f you know, you know, you know. It, it, obviously, it's a film, right? So it's nothing compared to what happened uh, 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 60 or so years ago, right? Um, but I think that's the closest, in terms of art, one could go. It felt very real. Um, I saw so many faces, um, different faces, but I felt humanity. Ife was literally telling them to just stop it and get on with it and know that We've got to always respect each other and, and, and you know, uh, uh, be compassionate for each other if we really want to uh, bring back the warmth that we once had uh, six years ago. 
I personally like the silences, you know, the silences in the film, uh, my part at least. In the average shelter, and it went quiet. So it was very scary. It was very scary. And that provoked my feelings of my character to another place. It really helped me. History, you know, reading and you know, and then you, you, you try to be as, as, as one with it as possible. But it wasn't very hard for me because as I told you, you know, my, my, you know, my, my whole family, we came uh, from war. I feel that, you know, you know, you know Ita and Ife, you know, isn't very far away from my, you know, myself. It's phenomenal, it really is. It's, he's an amazing, he's just a genius, his whole vision of what he wants. But then I think what's great as an actor is he understands like an actor's mind. So I think you have this collaboration of having the character he's developed, make like give, gifting you the character and then you both working together because as you embody it, there are things that, you know, as an actor you see or feel and you have such, practical conversations that work and on set the conversations you have between each other that help you develop it between the two of you it's just it's so open-minded and it's with keeping the initial idea he has he allows a lot of space for you as actors to get creative as well which is a big thing I think for us to feel like we can do on set and yeah it's just the teamwork is amazing like with him with everyone it's it's fantastic. What um, initially attracted me to the role is, I think Jess's character, because she's such a strong character, I like to get to know like where it comes from and in her background. And I think given that being myself and being a person who's of like dual heritage, when you see something like that told from a time where I don't know many stories of women from that time or like of anyone, especially women. And I wanted to delve deeper into that and see what the story was because it looked so unique. I'd never told a story or even heard one like that before. You've heard the stories, you know, you learn about time during the Blitz in the 1940s, but I've never been able to relate and put myself in those shoes. And this allowed me to fully understand, especially as like different civilians, what that was like. And I think with it being told that from the perspective that it is, it's allowed me to understand more you know just about that time and how hectic it is but whilst also not concentrating too much on that being able to tell you know to them it was just their mundane lives their every day so it was quite nice looking at it from a point of view where it wasn't focusing too much on it it was just an element that was added to the time that we were in it wasn't too much it was just that the city you could see how everyone's life had changed do you know what i mean that, that was what I found most interesting, is having the element there, but then focusing on other stuff more. And, you know, focusing on the relationship between, you know, my character and George, and then even between, like, George and his mum, I think the way you follow it makes it a lot easier and more understandable. It was fun because we had to find, like, we wanted to find beautiful elements in it because as much as it's this gang and it's quite horrific and there's obviously a lot of toxic elements to them we had to try and show that they were a family regardless so we've got like little snippets of where you can see elements of love even if it's coming out in quite a toxic and horrific way and it was very fun finding those elements and i think on set and off set we were all rather close so we it allowed us to explore those different ways better which was quite good because it's quite a vulnerable situation each character had to be in to do that and I think we portrayed that really well on set and off set I think spending so much time together allowed the bond between us to develop more and yeah it was very chaotic and very intense but it's it was fun being able to show so many different dynamics in such a short amount of time between so many different people it was really good. It's the first time I've had to be on set with so much going on set wise um and it seriously helps you along with costume and everything just getting into that mindset and it feels so real when you're doing it because there's just so much going on and it really puts you in that time the noises even just listening to the noises the firemen and you know the wood falling and just the crackling of the fire it puts you entirely in it as an actor and i think it helped a lot with you know 
taking in that there's so much going on and trying to portray the emotions but also realising what situation you're still in. So you want to focus on the two characters, like between me and George, it being our farewell, but also having to acknowledge that we are still in the middle of causing a crime. You have to be able to aware of it all at the same time. And I think it helps that it consistently snaps you back into what's really going on in that moment and keeps you engaged at all times. So I think it makes it a lot more authentic for you and then how it comes across on screen, definitely. The hope that you can feel throughout the entire film comes with nearly every character. I think there's snippets of things where instead of it being, you know, there is the huge hope of will he get back to his, will George get back to his mother? But then there's the little bits of hope in places between different characters and the relationship with um, even Jess and George in times where they're okay, in times where you can even see where her and Albert might be getting on there's so many different bits throughout it which i think is great because instead of it just being an extreme version of hope each you can find the hope in the little places which i think is a great message for people to see and the audience to see is that it comes in different shapes and forms and it might not be as drastic as you think but it's you can see it underlining in everyone's situation throughout the film the family apart from the fact they're living through this dreadful time but the family aspect of it isn't is something I was that there's something I was brought up in. I was the, we had the same sort of family, working class family, lived in a little funny little terraced house. So it ain't too far away from what I come from and who I am, you know, in that for in those terms anyway. And uh, and Gerald is um, is a socialist and he's a, a trade unionist and fought against. Uh, Mosley's black shirts, you know, the British fascists. And um, so he was, uh, and also resolutely uh, anti-racist as well, you know. Um, so there are a lot of things that, you know, I kind of related to because I ain't too far away from where I'm, where I'm at as well, you know. Well, I can remember, um, you know, my dad telling me he, he came from Brighton, he was born in Brighton. And as a small kid, he was, uh, they were all in a, uh, an air raid shelter one night, overnight, and they come out in the morning and the whole street had been flattened. That's all, the whole street had gone, you know. Like many other people, I've got tales like that. And um, my mum was evacuated as a child, young child during the war. So, um, you know, all those stories were still uh, relevant to those people, you know, and obviously they told us as kids, they would tell us these stories as well. And, um, you know, really it was only like, a, I mean, I was only born like 18 years after the war ended or something like that. So it was still fresh in that generation's mind, you know, even as kids and stuff, you know, let alone my grandparents who'd been through First World War and Second World War, you know. It help, It helps to, uh, as soon as you put the, the clothes on, it definitely helps you... Uh, form your character as well, yeah. Um, well, they're all vintage clothes as well. I think they're all actually vintage clothes from that time as well, which is great. And I think it would look pretty authentic to me anyway. And, uh, but I think, yeah, probably all that, getting my hair cut, the clothes, all that helped fed into uh, to becoming this other character, you know. It's incredible. I mean, he's only uh, nine maybe or something like that, you know, and it's a lot. It's a lot to take on. I don't know what he's like as a character because he's a little cheeky little thing at times. And uh, but he's um, he's smart as well. And uh, the fact he's able to um, hold his concentration and sustain that even after w waiting around, which is hard for anyone, but for a kid as well, it's pretty incredible, you know. For me personally, right, as soon as they were sort of said rolling or you know. Said, action uh it really just felt we ran that we were there at that time there was another scene we did um in a pub in uh, west london which was like a an old 1930s uh pub and it hasn't been changed at all and i remember i was sitting at the piano in this particular scene and looked round to see all the extras in their costumes and it was almost like a you know it could have been like a haunted pub or something you know full of uh of 1940s ghosts and uh, it just felt real. Beryl is 
a very, how can I put it, troubled character. She's quite poor and not a very happy person. So she was great fun to play. Beryl inhabits a world of thievery and prostitution. Um, she makes her money through criminal means. She loves her brother, Albert, and she loves her niece, Jess. But I think that's as far as it goes with spreading her love. I suppose I wanted to be part of this project because I'm a fan of Steve McQueen. I think he's a brilliant filmmaker, he's a brilliant artist. Being directed by Steve McQueen uh, was fabulous. It was, uh, it went beyond my expectations really. He allows great freedom, which I didn't expect because he wrote the script. And usually when you've written a script, you're quite precious about these words that you've sweated over coming up with. But he was happy to chuck everything out and just ask us to improvise. Well, what I've enjoyed, I've really enjoyed um, Naomi's makeup, our makeup designer, um, because I was in the chair for no longer than 15 minutes. That's the way I like it. And of course, Jackie's brilliant costumes. Um, and also, not just working with Steve McQueen, but working with Stephen Graham and our little gang. Um, that was fabulous, really. We became quite close, quite quick, which was great. That's what you want. You want to have this sense that we've all known each other for years. When we first walked onto the bombed Café de Paris, um, it made me feel incredibly sad because it was so realistic. And then we had all these dead bodies, some of them played by real people <laughs> and some of them were dummies. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was fantastic. Um, the production design is incredibly impressive. Well, for me, Blitz is all about love. That to me is what it is. It's, it's a love story between George and his mother. George trying to get back to his mum, um, you know, saying to his mum, I hate you. And then feeling that guilt and feeling I've got to sort this out now. So he jumps off the train. I think it's brilliant. I think it's a great premise for a story. It's, uh, you know, it's an odyssey. And, um, and what's driving him is to get back to mum and granddad and Ollie the cat because he loves them. The design element was a really important part of the movie for Steve and for, for the, the look of it. And we were lucky enough to get Adam Stockhausen who uh, has worked with Steve on Widows before um, and they have a very tight relationship to come on board as uh, as the production designer. And he, uh, first of all, designed, then created, then visualised this world that we were going to uh, work from based on 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 um, on Steve's script. And we decided that we would build some of the big sets. Is that that, that uh, there's quite a lot of the action takes place in an underground station first before it gets destroyed and then after it gets destroyed. So we built that um, here at Leavesden. Uh, similarly, we wanted to do a big scene in the Café de Paris. And so we built that before and then after it had been bombed that we uh, wanted to um, to see our hero street after a bombing. So we went and shot our hero street on a real street in London, basically, where it's fully formed. Then we built the bombed uh, version of that here on the back lot at Leaveson. And then we also built, as one does on, on movies, various rooms and houses and interior trains and all the rest of it, because it's just a, a, an easier thing to do. So the art department, the set dressing, the props are very a huge part of this movie, and, and they make it very, very cinematic. Jacqueline Duran, who came on board as a costume designer, is a, an Academy 
winning uh, um, uh, designer. And she, you know, because it's massive, one of, the, one of the things that makes this film really epic in scale is that there are a lot of extras in it in every scene. We, we're using as little CGI and visual effects as possible, and that wherever possible, we peopled the movie out to the to the limit of the of the frame, as it were. So there was a massive job to be done, not only for our main actors' costumes, but for all of the uh, extras in the background. And she has worked with her team in an amazing way, closely with Stockhausen coming up with a color palette that really works between the design of the sets and the design of the costumes and all the rest of it. And, and very, her, her office is actually the best office in terms of the, uh, the sort of uh, visual uh, references that she went to and found all of these images from London in the 40s and all the rest of it and people in, the, in what, what they're wearing and all the rest of it. We also sort of quite deliberately wanted to introduce a different element to the feel of the film so that we had, you know, Jacqueline and, and, and Adam in many ways come from Hollywood cinema and Yorick doesn't. He comes from a much more French indie sort of uh, feel and we wanted to give, Steve wanted to give the film that sort of feel so it has a little bit of an edge to it. It feels different to other um, uh, Hollywood films and Yorick's done a, a beautiful job with his team in, 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 in lighting the film because it's epic, it has a massive sweep. You know, if, 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 if it reminds me of a David Lean movie in many ways. You know, it's got that small story at its heart and it's on an epic canvas. You know, so in terms of British cinema, it comes from a very good place in that respect because he's probably one of our greatest uh, directors. So I think it, it, it brings, brings all of those things out. And I think, it's, I think it's, it's, it's entertaining. I think you're gonna get sucked into this world. I think the audience will be very quiet when they're watching this film. You know, I think it's, it's something that's gonna really ab absorb them. You know, and because again, at its heart, it's a very simple emotional story about a boy trying to find his mum.